Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. I hope you are in a being to learn this course. Again, I am Paula Visa and I will be giving you a lecture for the course Discrete Mathematics. Before we start our lecture, how do you feel today? Are you ready to learn new things? I hope you will stay focused and motivated enough to start the class. During your first tutorial class, I have highlighted the study plan for the course. Now, let me explain the three CLOs for the course. To cater for the first CLO, you will have lecture and student-centered learning whereby you will be assessed through the quiz, test and final exam. To cater to the second CLO, you will attend tutorial classes and cooperative and student-centered learning. You will be assessed based on the problem task. Cooperative learning and student-centered learning will be the method to cater to the last CLO. You will be assessed based on the case study presentation and report. The slide shows the topics that will be covered for this course. There are altogether 9 topics that you will learn. Not much, right? Regarding the continuous assessment, there will be 2 quizzes in week 5 and 14, 1 test in week 7, 2 problem-based tasks, 1 in week 3 and the other one in week 10. There will also be 1 case study in week 12. So, please take note of these assessments. Now, let's see what will be covered in this topic 1. At the end of the topic, you are supposed to represent sets using standard notation, recognize different types of sets, and apply Venn diagram to represent set operations. It is important to understand the definition of set. A set is any well-defined collection of objects called elements or members of the set. For example, we have a set of all students taking this course, a set of all lecturers at the university, and a set of all real numbers between 0 and 1. Thus, it is important to learn set theor theory as it is the basis of several other fields of study like counting theory, relations, and graph theory. Now, let us see how to represent the set in three ways. Description of a set, roster or tabular form, and set builder notation. So, what is a description of a set? It is a statement that describes the elements of a set. Can you understand? If you are asked to write a description of a set containing the elements Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, let's see the solution. The solution is the set is the day of the week. Do you agree with me? Let's move on to the next type of representing a set in roster form. The set is represented by listing all the elements comprising it. The elements are enclosed within braces and separated by commas. For example, you are asked to write a set A, a natural number less than 6, in roster form. Do you know how to write it in roster form? Let's see how to solve the problem. First, you have to list the natural number that is less than 6, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Remember, 6 is not included as the question asks for less than 6. Thus, the correct way to write set A in roster form is shown on the slide. Can you follow my lecture so far? Now, let's see the last type representing a set, that is, set builder notation form. This type of set is defined by specifying a property that an element of the set have in common. The set is described as shown on the slide. A indicates the generic form of the element in the set. The vertical bar or colon is used as a separator, meaning such that. The most right part represents any constraints on the element. Let's see the example. You are supposed to write a set B in set builder notation form. Can you try it first before I show you the solution? Hmm. I guess most of you managed to write it well. You can either write your answer like this or like this. Both are correct. The slide shows some notation in a set. Try to memorize it as it is useful, especially when writing a set builder notation form. I'm sure most of the symbols are not new to you, but I would like to highlight on Q symbol. As you can see, when P is divided with Q, where P and Q are integers, and q cannot equal to 0. Do you know why? It is because any number that is divided with 0 will get infinity. 
The table shows the description of each symbol. The diagram on the slide represents the real number system. I hope you can differentiate between natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, etc. Let's do this simple exercise. Can you write each of the following sets using set builder notation? Well done, students. I'm sure most of you got the correct answer. Those who got wrong, don't worry. You may ask me during our second class tutorial. In the previous subtopic, I have taught you how to represent the sets. Now, let us see the different types of sets. First, we have a finite set. A finite set refers to a set that contains a definite number of elements. For example, set S is a set of natural numbers between 50 to 70. It means that the value of X starts from 51 and ends at 69. In other words, it has limited values. Next, we have an infinite set that contains an infinite number of elements. For example, set S is a set of natural numbers greater than 10. It means that the value of x starts from 11 to infinity or endless. A subset is another type of set. A set x is a subset of or equal to set y if and only if all elements of x are also the element of set y. Look at the example given on the slide. As all the elements of set a contain in set b, hence a is a subset of or equal to b. Another type of set is a proper subset. Set X is said to be a proper subset of Y if every element of X is an element of set Y, with the number of elements in X being less than the element of Y. Look at the example on the slide. Do you think that set A is a proper subset of set B? Yes, you are right. Set A is a proper subset of set B because all the elements of set A contained in set B and the number of elements in set A and B are not equal. Next, let's see another type of set called the universal set. It is a collection of all elements in a particular context or application. The universal set is presented as a capital letter of U. Now, let's define U as the set of all animals on Earth. Thus, a set of all mammals is a subset of U. You got what I mean? An empty or null set is a set with no elements and is denoted by a null set symbol. The cardinality of the empty set is zero. Look at the example given on the slide. X is a natural number, and the value of X is between 7 and 8. Thus, the set is empty because there is no value for natural numbers between 7 and 8. Singleton or unit set contains only one element and is denoted by a single value between the bases. An example of this set is shown on the slide. Since the value of x between 7 and 9 is 8, thus it is called singleton as it has only one value. An equal set refers to the two sets with the same elements. Look at the example given on the slide. Although the arrangement of the elements in sets A and B are not the same, the values are the same. Thus, we can conclude that both are equal sets. An equivalent set refers to the same cardinalities of the two sets. For example, although set A has a different value from set B, the cardinalities of both sets are the same, that is, 3. A disjoint set means that the two sets, A and B, have not even one element in common. Look at the example, where A has the value of 1, 2 and 6, while set B has the value of 7, 9 and 14. Since there is no single common element in these two sets, thus these sets are disjoint. We have come to the last set type that is Cartesian or cross product. The Cartesian product of A and B is denoted by A times B. It is the set of all other pairs A and B where A is the member of set A and B is the member of set B. Please note that A times B is not equal to B times A. It is because the arrangement of pairs for these two conditions is different. Let's see the example on the slide. Can you list the Cartesian product for A and B? I want you to try first before I show you the answer. Yes, I am sure most of you got the correct answer. 
you can try for A times B and B times A. As you can see, the results of our solutions for both conditions is different. Now, let's try to do this exercise. There are four questions and I want you to try them first before showing you the answer. So, what is the answer to the first question? The answer is yes. A is a subset of B. In the second question, the answer is no. A is not a subset of B, but B is a subset of A. What is the answer to the third question? The answer is no. And in the last question, the answer is yes. Well, I think that's all for our lecture today. I will continue the third subtopic for topic 1 during your tutorial class. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you during our second tutorial class. Have a nice weekend, students. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.